Yeah, I still like my scalp. Welcome back, Anonymous Biker USA. First time here, hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing. Well, I'm out on my 2017 Indian Scout. And as we know, Indian Motorcycle Company, aka Polaris, launched the 2025 Scout and the all new redesigned platform. So as a six year Scout owner, what do I think? Well, when this Scout came out, they had the Scout 60 and the Scout, which is this version. Now this version in the new release is basically called the Scout Classic, but then they have several other iterations along the way. Now as the Scout platform grew, they had the Scout Bobber, the Scout Bobber 20, the Scout Rogue. Well, with the 2025, we now have the Scout Classic, the Sport Scout, the Super Scout, and the Scout 101. All with a 1250cc liquid-cooled engine called the Speed Plus, so a whole new motor. The frame has gone from aluminum to a steel tube frame for easier customization. The suspension has gone to an inverted front fork and the piggyback rear shocks that are adjustable with three millimeters of travel, same as this, but these are not adjustable. Comes with dual front Brembo brakes, single rear disc brake, whereas the Scout Classic, quote, quote, 2017 is single. So with the new Scout, the one that caught my eye is the Scout 101. So what is the difference between my Scout and that Scout? Well, we got the frame, we got the suspension. It has 111 horsepower, whereas this is 100. It has 82 foot-pound of torque, whereas this is 72 foot-pound of torque. It has the four inch, four inch ride command cluster, where it has all kind of metrics for your bike, as well as navigation. The navigation, comes with a free subscription for the first year then you gotta subscribe to it in order to get the traffic updates and the map updates I don't like that that should be included now I have a GPS that I put on my bike I bought that installed it there it is so would I upgrade to the Scout 101 oof that's tough I really like Scout 101 in that ghost white metallic and it is definitely a completely revised bike like I said different frame different suspension different brakes more horsepower more torque more infotainment and electronics cruise control USB port slightly larger fuel tank but that's nominal 3.4 versus 3.3 and the weight, ah, it's nominal. I think it's 538 pounds versus 550. Um, the exhaust on the new Scout 101 is a two into one, where this is a traditional two into two. And the price tag comes in at 16,999 base. Now, when I bought this, I believe it was 12,499. And if you go back and watch the video entitled, I spent how much, it will tell you how much I spent to the penny getting this bike to sit exactly as we see it today. Now the Scout 101 has a really nice color matched quarter fairing. Well, I have the Dart Marlin windscreen. Is it the same? Not in look, but in purpose, yes. So what is the real difference with the Scout 101 and my bike? Well, brakes, frame, suspension, more horsepower, more torque, right? more infotainment, more entertainment, uh, the infotainment, the navigation, 
but you can argue I have the navigation right here and I have a Bluetooth headset that I can listen to my music. So that's a wash. I don't need that. The bigger fuel tank, nominal. The better brakes, would it be nice? Absolutely. Alright, so of all the new Scouts, the Scout 101 definitely caught my eye the most. Now as I said, that is $16,999 out, not out the door. You still got to have tax tax title, so you're probably somewhere about 18 and a half. And what would you have to change to make that bike really the way you want it? Let's look at that. Well, the exhaust has to go, right? So let's just say that's 600 bucks for a slip-on. The bars, I like the new six inch riser, the T-bar style, so I don't think you have to change that. The seat, most likely you're gonna change that. So let's just say, I mean, you get a Mustang or a Corbin, let's just call that 600 bucks. So that's 1200. It has traditional foot pegs. Would I change that? Not a requirement, however. I have these ISO wings on mine, which I really like. But I think on the 101, I would do that Dean Speed Customs alloy machined foot plate. It's a little bigger, has a little different look to it. Um, but with that, not quite sure if uh, those things are available yet with the aftermarket because the platform has changed. Now, the foot pegs are probably standard from the old Scouts, but even like the exhaust and things of that nature, it's probably why Indian released it so early so all those aftermarket things can be in place when it hits the floors. So three things you're replacing, right? So say those those pegs are like 150 bucks. So we're at 16.999 plus tax tax title 18 and a half, and then another what 13.50. And you pretty much have an all around. What if you take a trip, day trip, overnight, whatever it is, you got to add bags, right? Just say five or six hundred bucks there, so that's nineteen hundred. So let's just say two thousand with tax and everything. So you're two thousand dollars more into the bike. So it's about almost twenty-one thousand. Now at that price point, do you think it's worth it? I mean, you do get a lot of bike. Do you have to change those things? No. Are you going to need bags? Probably. Uh, I have bags for this Scout that it's super capable of doing long miles. I've done it and have never had an issue. Bike I find very comfortable. So let's just take a look at this Scout, which you all have seen. Alrighty, so you see my Scout, right? 2017, the tricolor, which I think is phenomenal, red, white, and blue. And you guys know, those who've watched the channel for a while, know what I've done and added to this bike. Tons of things. Those who are new here, you can go back and watch that video. I spent how much, and it'll talk about everything I've done on this bike. So the new Scout 101, would I trade this? No. Because I'm not going to get near what I think this is worth to me, just monetarily. Not going to get what I think it's worth monetarily. Not to mention, I think this bike's awesome. I'm just not getting rid of it. The color, everything I've done to it. I mean, would it be nice to have the Scout 101? Yes. Now, would I add another Scout? Eh, I don't know. You guys know I like trying all different kind of bikes. When I buy them, gives you the opportunity to learn about all the different manufacturers. So I feel like that'd be kind of a lateral move. Uh, if I had Powerball, I'd buy the Scout 101 tomorrow. And then I would make all the changes and see how much more fun it is. And then really compare it, see if I see the difference. I definitely intend on riding it though, just to see if I can feel the difference. Um, and then maybe I would trade one of the other bikes for the Scout 101 because... This engine, 
It's the 1133cc has been absolutely flawless for me. Now with that being said, the new 1250 Speed Plus, that is a new motor. You usually like to give it a year run to see if there's any problems so they can work all that stuff out. Um, but the overall look of the new Scout 101, really like it. Um, let's get back on and just say, let's get back on and just discuss. Ah, there we go. I mean, this thing sounds great, runs great. The only problems I've ever had with this bike, and I've done a video on it, is the first year there was a recall on the starter. I didn't have the issue, but I got it replaced under warranty anyway. Easy peasy. And uh, the second thing was just a, a weird one-off. Uh, <laughs> the shifter bolt broke when I was in fifth gear on the highway. So I lost the ability to shift. <laughs> and that was a harrowing experience. But I was able to, and this is where I saw how much torque and grunt the Scout had, being stuck in fifth gear, I was able to get off the ramp and my dealer was like five miles away. I still had enough power and pull slowing down and timing red lights to get it into the parking lot so it could be repaired. And that was done under warranty also. So that was probably three years ago now. So other than that, knock on wood, I have had zero mechanical issues. So, you know, the routine maintenance is done on this bike. So if I were to get a tune on this bike and put it on the dyno, I could probably get it closer to the new Scout 101 numbers. So then what would I really be getting if I changed? Brakes, better suspension, different frame, and the uh, ride cluster right here with all the uh, infotainment and navigation. I don't know. I mean, I would not trade this bike for that, though, because I just simply like this bike too much. I wouldn't get rid of it. But then having two, I don't want to say of the same bike because it is a different bike, but having two Indian Scouts, you know, you only get so many bikes per life and you only have so many resources. So I do like trying other manufacturers, so that would be tough. Um, you know, unless you went a whole other direction and you got the Super Scout, which is kind of like a mini touring bike, and then you repurposed your, your touring bike with that bike. But then you're going to say, well, why don't we just get the Super Chief? Because that's got a bigger engine and that's actually made for touring. I don't know. So, no real answer there. What would you all do? Leave it in the comments below. Those of you that own Indian Scouts, leave your comments. Uh, I will always stand by this bike. It's the 2017. I think it is a phenomenal performer, handles great. The suspension that's on this bike, I have never had an issue. Uh, the horsepower, the torque, never had an issue. Like I said, if I got a tune and a dyno, it already has the uh, high performance air filter and the slip-on, so that would take it up a stage, and it would give it more horsepower and torque, so that's always an option for a lot less than $16,999. Now, I know what you're saying. You're not getting the same frame, you're not getting the same brakes, you're not getting the same suspension. Very true, but I'm okay with that. So, while I think Indian did a really good job with redesigning the Scout platform, I would not trade my bike because I just have it dialed in to where I want it with my personal preference and taste and of all my bikes that I ride never do I stop without somebody making a positive comment about this bike every time six years later still happens so that's my take on the 2025. I think they did a great job. And I think, look, if you want to just get into the Scout platform, that classic at $13,499 is still a great buy. And the Scout 60 is even cheaper. Great buy for a beginner. Uh, if you're looking first time to get a Scout and you are a seasoned rider, the 101 
offers a heck of a lot for the price. You know, the Harley Sportster, it's 1250 also, the Revolution Max, and I've ridden that, that thing's quick. I don't know if it's comparable in size, but it's just different. It's a different riding position, it's a different feel. So I don't know if you could really compare those. And then if you put bags on the Scout 101, are you kind of getting into the ST Lowrider? Although the ST Lowrider has a bigger fairing, but then the 101 has the quarter fairing. I mean, I, I'm splitting hairs, man. I don't know. Uh, but then the SD Lowrider is probably, what, 23? So, it's getting real fuzzy and gray across classes with these bikes and what they offer. Be really curious though, the first year of that um, Speed Plus 1250, if there's any issues, any problems. Usually there is, so let's see what happens once people start buying them mod them out, doing what they got to do. Curious to see some of those really talented bike builders, what they do with the new platform. Um, what do we got here? But the Scout platform overall has just been such a winner for Indian slash Polaris. So if the 2025 version of the Scout has, a, has as a successful run as this version, it's another home run because, I mean, this platform here, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. So I hope the new one does just as well. Can't wait to ride it. Definitely going to ride it when it comes out. And you know what? Once I ride it, maybe it'll be like, oh my god, what a difference. Maybe I will change. I won't trade this, but maybe I'll be like, ah, you know what? Let me flip the Kawasaki for that, or who knows? Maybe I'd flip the Goldwing and then actually get money back. How about that? Walk out of the dealership with them giving me money. Ha! Ah, wouldn't that be funny? But who knows with this bike life? You're always looking at the next one, even when you get the last one. All the nuances, changes, ability to learn the different manufacturers and how they do things, how they feel. But that makes you educated across all platforms to know what you really like and dial in a bike how you want it. So uh, I, I would say this, you know, I currently have the five bikes, the Goldwing, the Z900, the ADV Royal Enfield, the Triumph 650, and this. If you told me I had to get rid of all of them and keep one, I know this is going to be crazy for a lot of you, but I'm probably keeping this. That should tell you a lot. I just think it's probably the best all-rounder for me. And I've done 500 mile days on this with bags. Not a problem. Is the Goldwing great for that? Absolutely. Is the Scout capable? 100% yes. And then the zipping around town and all that, I mean, this bike is perfect for that. Now, it won't replace the complete exhilaration that the Z900 gives me, but if I got this tuned, it could provide some of it, because it's still a lot of fun. Just a different ride, so I'm a big Scout fan, curious to see when they come out to get all the feedback. I know coming up this week, uh, mid-April 2024, there will be press rides, and I know some people going on that, so there is uh, one particular person going on that ride that I trust his opinion and feedback very much, Mr. Brandon Picasso. So I'm curious to see what he thinks, because he will be dead honest about his feedback on that bike. And he's owned the Scout, and he rebuilds them. He is through and through knowledgeable on the Indian platform so I mean yeah, woo, just whipping through right I mean the Scout is just so awesome if you're thinking about a Scout go get it you know that leads to the other the other uh, discussion with this new platform coming out how many of the 
let's just call it, I don't know, call it Gen 1. This Gen 1 Scout, this version, how many of these will be flooding the market that you'll be able to get at a really good price? So, you know, if I was to take this to a dealer, as is, I mean, they're probably going to say, oh, I'll give you six grand for it. I'd be like, you're out of your mind. I could probably sell it privately for eight. Um, you know, and with that being said, if I sold this for eight, the, the second the guy drove away on it, I would be like, man, I just got ripped off because I know what I have into it, but then I just know, I mean, I just like this bike too much. So that's why I know I can't sell it and I'm not gonna trade it. I'd rather just get the new one and bite the bullet. So let's uh, hop off down here. Looks like we're going right into the lake. Ah! But man, just done so much between all the little components put on, seat, bars, grips, windshield, GPS, sissy bar, bags, chrome belt plate, primary, chrome that, license plate holder, uh, LED, rear, fender bolt, RC components exhaust, Larry's tail art, primary cover, Change the shifter peg, brake reservoir cover, top and bottom, <laughs> LED, custom dynamics headlight in the front. So the new ones have LED all around, but now so do I. So I think the old Scout right here is amazing, and I think the new one will be too. So hats off to Indian slash Polaris on a job well done. I can't wait to ride it and let you know what I think. So thanks for watching, and don't forget.